The finest rockets ever seen, they burst in stars of blue and green, or after thunder, golden showers came falling like a rain of flowers. Well met, my friends. Joyston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle Earth. Today we have a nice, simple, and short tale about Gandalf's amazing fireworks that were seen in the Shire on special occasions. There isn't much info about these, but I'll leave some related articles and videos in the description and cards. My friends, thank you all for joining me today. Let's begin our tale. Fireworks in Middle-earth have their origin with Gandalf the Wizard. Gandalf, the servant of the secret fire and the wielder of the flame of Anor, obviously had an affinity for fire. At least thematically. While the secret fire refers to the flame imperishable, the flame that gives true life, and Anor refers to the sun, he also bore the elvish ring Narya, the ring of fire. Of course, these flames have other meanings as well, like the flame of one's heart or courage. But in a thematic sense, Gandalf is associated with flame in many good ways. We also see this with him lighting pine cones aflame during The Hobbit to fight off wargs. So following that theme, it should be no surprise that, just as Gandalf loved the hobbits and smoked their leaf just as they did, he too created things out of flame and smoke for their amusement, adoration, and astonishment. Whereas Saruman used black powder for explosives to be implemented during the Battle of Helm's Deep, Gandalf probably used similar kinds of powder, not for the use of warfare and killing, but for enjoyment and entertainment. I say probably because the kinds of fireworks Gandalf made and the actions those fireworks took could not be achieved solely by gunpowder, even today. So they definitely had some wizardry involved, and mayhaps Narya aided in this, but perhaps not. I have seen arguments to be made about that on both sides. So with Gandalf's abilities as a wizard, and with his love for hobbits and their simple lives, he made fireworks. They would be seen on very special occasions, such as Midsummer's Eve, a holiday beloved by hobbits during the life of the Old Took. Indeed, the Old Took, the grandfather of Bilbo Baggins, would hold the event to celebrate Midsummer's Eve, and he was good friends with Gandalf the Wizard, who sent forth his fireworks on those occasions. But after the death of the Old Took, Gandalf's fireworks were not seen for nigh on a century. But the hobbits did not forget them, as Bilbo remembered Gandalf's fireworks when Gandalf came to his door at the beginning of the events of The Hobbit in 2941 of the Third Age. Bilbo remembered the fireworks of great lilies, snapdragons, and laburnums of fire that would hang in the twilight all evening. Gandalf and Bilbo would become great friends during the quest of Erebor, so in the year 3001 of the Third Age, on September 22nd, fireworks would be seen once again in the quiet Shire night to celebrate Bilbo's 111th birthday, a day of special magnificence. In the days before the party, Samwise Gamgee, who had been knowledgeable about the goings-on in Bag End, started rumors that fireworks would indeed be at the party. Indeed, an odd-looking wagon laden with odd-looking packages came into Hobbiton up to Bag End. Strange dwarves drove the cart, and at the end of the second week of September, Gandalf himself brought a cart through Bywater towards Hobbiton. Hobbit children ran after the cart, and it had a cargo of fireworks, not seen since their ancestors had celebrated Midsummer's Eve many years before. There were great bundles of fireworks with all sorts and shapes, and each was labeled with a large red G, and an elf rune as well. The hobbits thought the G was for Grand, even though it was the mark for Gandalf. While the hobbit children had to leave Bag End disappointed that day, they had much to be excited for. Finally, the big day came, and at 6.30 on the 22nd of September, the fireworks started. Gandalf let them off with the distribution of rockets, squibs, crackers, backer wrappers, sparklers, torches, dwarf candles, elf fountains, goblin barkers, and thunderclaps. Even Gandalf's work had improved with age. Some rockets went like birds with sweet voices. Some were green trees with branches and leaves, dropping little flowers. There were fountains of butterflies, pillars of colored fires that turned into eagles, sailing ships, or flying swans. There was a red thunderstorm with a shower of yellow rain, a forest of silver spears that sprang, a yell like an army, that came down into the water, hissing like snakes. And finally, the last surprise was a great smoke that went up, like a mountain in the distance, whose summit gleamed. It sprouted green and scarlet flames, and out came a red golden dragon, like Smaug. 
It was not life-size, but indeed lifelike, with fire coming from his jaws as his eyes glared down, and a roar went out as he went over the crowd three times. He went by like an express train, somersaulting and bursting over bywater with an incredibly loud explosion. That signaled supper. Though they knew it not, in many ways, Gandalf's fireworks that night told the history of Middle-earth through some of its important events up until that night. Perhaps, if there was a show of fireworks after the events of the Lord of the Rings, there would have been included a mountain of flame erupting while there was yet cheering as a firework. Who knows? Gandalf's fireworks were legendary indeed, and to my knowledge, they would not be seen in Middle-earth again, although they would be remembered in the annals of the Shire and its folk. Indeed, after Gandalf fell in Moria, and the Fellowship lamented him in February of 3019, Sam made a stanza about Gandalf's fireworks, although Sam did not believe they did Gandalf justice, and Frodo missed not his fireworks, only Gandalf himself and how he had been. Of course, that wasn't the end, and the hobbits would see their dear Gandalf again, but I'm sure that Gandalf would have smiled at Sam's poem about his fireworks. And indeed, the hobbits would surely tell stories to their kids and grandkids and so forth of the night that beautiful fire sprang over the Shire at Bilbo's birthday, just as tell of those fireworks made it into the Red Book of Westmarch. And perhaps men would eventually try their own hands at the lost art of crafting fireworks. And so we come to the end of our tale about Gandalf's fireworks. From this tale, we see how Gandalf loved to make a simple and peaceful people happy. Rather than thinking about what we might gain, as Saruman did, we should instead seek to put a smile on someone else's face and take pleasure in the simple wonders of life. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. Depending on where everyone is, I hope you had a great Independence Day if you're in the US or are otherwise having a great midsummer. Let me know your thoughts, questions, additions, and corrections about Gandalf's fireworks in the comments below. I love that Tolkien did this and had this epic wizard who would go on to fight a demon of old be also the same old wizard who loved to make fireworks to make hobbit children happy. It really shows how wise and good of heart Gandalf was, for while he was powerful indeed, it was truly the small things that made him happy. Please check out our music channel, Facebook, Twitter, Merch, and Patreon for Discord server and podcasts. Links are in the description below. Royan and I just did a podcast with our friends over on Patreon where we discussed the Fellowship of the Ring movie after having watched it. If you're interested, please head on over to our Patreon to check that out. I also wanted to give a shout out and thanks to our Valor tier patrons over on Patreon. Adrian DeLatour, Chris Ortner, Peter Shepard, Kyle Wetzel, Lane Grimes, Mr. Vat Nadal, Samuel McBee, Jonathan Bootnam, and Kyrie Kawaii. Thank you all so much. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today, and I'll see you all again next week with a Who Would Win video. I left some options for that versus video on a poll in the community tab so you can all vote for your favorite option. Everyone, as always, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my great friends.